What is happening, ladies and gents? We back with another reaction video. And we got something for y'all. We have Aquaman versus Namor. The death battle. The battle to end all battles. It will. I'm sure they're going to have more, but forget all that Superman versus Goku bullshit. All that Hulk versus big other big person. Or I guess you could say Doomsday. Or what since they did it. Or Thor versus Diana. Fuck all that. This is the fight everybody wants to see. <laughs> this is it. This is the the battle that is old as time. <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna get right into it because I, I wanna see who went. I, I I bet they have Namor win because Namor can fly. I've always liked Aquaman more, even when Aquaman was kind of the butt of the joke. Even DC was making him the butt of the joke. The jokes. Like, I've always liked Aquaman more. And Namor has always just kind of been. They kind of did it in the 90s where they made Aquaman kind of like a. Like a little. Like a. Pissant. Like. King type asshole. Like he's privileged. And I, I kind of hated that. But. He was still badass. I don't, I don't keep stopping. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, All right here we go. And I gotta keep looking at it and make sure it's. You know the phrase, there's plenty of fish in the sea? Yeah, real obvious, but it turns out there's a bunch of superheroes down there too. I don't think you understand what that phrase means. Like Aquaman, the king of Atlantis. And Namor, the first mutant and also king of Atlantis. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find Namor. out who will win a oh, death yeah, I'm, battle. I'm saying Aquaman gonna win. I don't get mermaids. I mean, they're kind of hot. But they're fish people? And then when you meet them, all they want to do is try to kill you. I guess Tom Curry got to be one of the lucky ones, if you know what I mean. After a chance meeting, Tom was left to father Arthur, the son of a mysterious woman of the sea. Though she thinks she was knocked up by a fish Jesus wizard? It's not important. Comics are weird. Regardless, Arthur learned to hone his aquatic powers from a very young age. When Arthur was just two years old, poor Tom thought he had drowned when he was actually just playing with some fish while breathing underwater. Tom trained Arthur to master his powers until What's eventually his for? mother showed up with a heavy <laughs> dose <Yeah>. of fruit. <laughs> Arthur was the rightful king of the underwater city, Atlantis. Uh, I wish there were more stories about parents coming back in real life too. And so Arthur would descend the ocean depths to claim his birthright and maintain the peace between land and sea as the king, the superhero, Aquaman. Oh, are you one of the people who thinks that Aquaman is lame? Well, think again. He's super strong, super fast, and can think chill again, deep underwater bitch. for as long as he wants. And no, he doesn't just talk to fish. Man, he sense. dominates their brains and forces them to bend to his will. Uh, only if he has to. He prefers to telepathically communicate with them, and yes. most sea life respects him enough to come to his aid. Except for piranhas, apparently, which ate off his freaking hand. I know you're a hardcore badass, but make those fish bow to your kingly kingship, damn it! Not to worry. After a few gaudy hooks and a magic water hand, he got better. Arthur controls sea life by tapping into a worldwide phenomenon called the better. clear. Kind of like the Force from Star Wars, but just in the ocean. Through the clear, creatures he controls increase in strength. Some even become capable of breaking Green Lantern constructs. Also, Arthur's powers are not limited to just aquamarine life. He telepathically communicates oh, yeah, with all sorts of animals he was in, and can uh, even tap into the human was that mind. The, uh, wait, wait, Superman you're telling me he can series? mess with my brain too? Oh, get my hat, Wiz, the shiny one. Well, he has difficulty dominating more intelligent life. His octopus friend Topo is one such example of a being he cannot forcibly control. What's so impressive about that little guy? Oh, oh yeah, got it. And for humanoids, the most Aquaman can generally do is cause a headache or maybe a seizure. That 
doesn't make me feel much better. But while Aquaman has plenty of power on his own, he also draws from the mystical might of his most iconic weapon. The legendary Trident of Poseidon! And also the Trident of Neptune. Wait, isn't that the same god? Aren't they the same thing? Well, kind of. They both hmm. can control water, summon storms, create force fields, and unleash lightning. That one Greek and one's awesome. Roman. Do it, Disney World. You have to be in water. You think beer will work? Maybe. Jocelyn, get the kiddie pool and the keg. I'm going to Disney World. With added flight, hydrokinesis, earth manipulation, and more, what? Aquaman's trident was a perfect symbol to prove himself a mighty king. Literally, he's strong enough to push around oceanic plates, throw a submarine around with water magic, and lift this giant cruise ship. This ship appears big enough water to compare magic. to the world's Hello. largest cruise liner, the Symphony of the Seas, which weighs an incredible 228,000 tons. He's fast enough to keep up with Wonder Woman and swim around the it's whole planet heavy. in just an afternoon. Oh, and he even fought the ancient dead king of Atlantis, Atlan. He's this not guy that. was so strong, he sank Atlantis centuries ago with one blow from his scepter, and Aquaman held back a repeat of the same attack with his bare hands. While there's no official size for DC's Atlantis, it is officially considered a continent. Therefore, it has to have a greater landmass than Greenland, the largest island in the world. This means Atlantis must consist of more than 836,000 square miles. To sink or destroy it, Atlan must have been outputting potential energy averaging more than 155 trillion tons of TNT. Damn, everyone's always making fun of Aquaman, uh, but damn. he's pretty badass. Well, he does have one rather lame weakness. He's essentially fueled by water. If he's away from water for too long, he'll start to dry out, lose his powers, and eventually die. He lives under the sea, he wears yellow, and he's absorbent? Wiz, I figured it out! Oh! No! He's not SpongeBob. Moving on. Well, Aqua King has found some ways to work around the water problem. He can hydrate himself with blood. God damn, that's hardcore. Even with his flaws, Aquaman <laughs> is always pushing forward to protect his people. He may seem strange and silly, but he truly is a worthy king of Atlantis. Tell the surface dwellers to respect the sovereignty of my seas, or we'll return and finish what we've started. We all know this story. A wayward sailor meets a well, Aquaman princess, was basically ocean master. Yeah, except this time, the fish people got to be wedding crashers and dragged the princess back to her secret home of Atlantis. Her dad was pretty pissed, but he got even more pissed when he found out that uh, daddy's girl had already been knocked up and popped out a brand new kind of superhero, Namor the Submariner. The favor of Atlantis is the prince of the deep. Unlike those oh my God, the old Marvel DC would two years later, Namor would grow up among his fellow Atlanteans from the start. As the prince of the ocean, he received an impressive royal education, along with a sizable distrust of humankind. Yeah, I'd have a problem with humans too if some of the first people I ever met were Nazis. As the rightful heir to the throne, it was Namor's duty to protect Atlantis. <laughs> and with his mixed heritage, he had plenty of unique abilities to do so. He's got superhuman strength, speed, and durability. He can store water in his body and shoot it out of his pores like a human sprinkler, which is gross. Far more impressively, he can telepathically communicate with all types of marine life, including other Atlanteans, and can persuade them to follow his commands. Whether it be a squadron of armored sharks or a giant killer whale, the creatures of the sea follow the first mutant's lead. Did you say mutant? Yes. Technically, Namor is a three-way hybrid of human, Atlantean, and mutant genes. Unlike other Atlanteans, he possesses the mutant power of flight. Oh, is that why he's got those tiny little wings on his feet? I always thought those were like little rudders. Nope, he flies with them. Wow, that is dumb. Namor can also mimic the abilities of marine life, <laughs> sensing lateral lines like fish or absorbing and discharging shocks like an electric eel. And for even more power, he wields his legendary trident. All right, how many tridents does this guy have? Let me guess, four? Just one, the trident of Neptune. But I thought the other guy had a trident of Neptune. Oh, I think I just figured out why Aquaman had two different tridents. There you go. 
Well, this trident's got a bunch of cool magic powers. It can control water, shoot lasers, turn people invisible, and if Namor needs some backup, he can animate objects and his surroundings to bring living beings to fight alongside somewhere? him. And that's not even the only magic doohickey Namor has. He can use the horn of Proteus to summon sea monsters like Giganto, which is a super whale with arms. Look out, birds with arms. I'm starting a new subreddit. The Giganto is strong enough to withstand the blast of an atomic bomb, and yet it still pales in comparison to Namor's own strength. No kidding! The Submariner is strong enough to match the savage Incredible Hulk, who's lifted 150 billion tons of rock for over a minute. If that's not good enough for you, how about the time Namor held up a whole freaking island all by himself? He's quick enough to catch the Human Torch, absorbed and discharged electricity powerful enough to injure Doctor Doom, took on Thor Trident to Hammer, survived a mountain falling on him, and even resisted the mind control powers of the Purple Man. See, Boomstick, in the grand scheme of things, little winged feet aren't so bad Damn, when it's pretty impressive. The Purple Man. All right, Namor is pretty awesome for an elf in a Speedo. Excuse me? This is not a Speedo. Well, Jimmy. he has perfect okay? skin. These are my so. panties from Atlantis. <laughs> too bad he gets a bit uh, unstable if he's out of the water for too long. True, Namor's had a strange history of shifting personalities, sometimes even playing the part of villain. Apparently, his bouts of anger stem from a strange bipolar defect brought on by oxygen imbalance, which, last I checked, isn't quite how bipolar disorder works. No, Wiz, I have the same kind of problem. I get super evil and grumpy when I haven't had a beer in at least 24 hours. 24? Uh, 12, 6, 2, screw you. Boomstick, that's a chemical dependency. Ah, just like my personal hero, Bane. You're missing the point. Oh, you think the point is your ally, but you merely adopted the point. I was born in it, molded. <laughs> How about that the point? idiot. Oh. At the end of the day, as long as there is water in his veins, the Avenging Son is a heroic king of his people and a terrifying opponent. Know that I am Namor, ruler of the kingdom of Atlantis. Your time in the sun is over. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, I wonder if Blue Apron has any fish on the menu this week. Oh. All right. Look out below. I was hoping it'd be 3D. Peasant, you dare splash the Prince of Blood? Plenty of space around the pool, Spock. Prince of Blood. But you like the water. But I am the king of the seven seas. Versatile in there. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I forget he does. He say that shit all the time. Dragon Ball Z fight over here. Everyone has their place. That's just how things are. You should understand yours. The piranhas. You are such a terrific dumbass. <laughs> Yeah. 
Did he catch it? Yeah, he caught it. Let's see whose power truly controls the sea, shall we? He sounds evil. Oh my god. Of course they will have him see. And I just have to have say, my man, dang. A lot of people. Sweating so much from how intense that got. Aquaman and Namor's powers were so similar and well matched, this fight could have reasonably gone in either one's favor. In fact, neither had many powers that the other did not possess in some way. Like how Namor had his mutant wing feet, but Aquaman I know people go, oh, DC just ripped him. <laughs> Still, while Namor could certainly have won matter. this in some circumstances, Aquaman had the potential. Oh, yeah, I have seen to Aquaman do that. I wonder if they're going to do that in DC. Namor can match Savage Hulk, who held up 150 billion tons. But remember, Aquaman stopped Atlan's continent crushing attack, which had a potential energy over 150 trillion tons of TNT. Not exactly a one to one comparison, but consider Namor's own similar feat, keeping the island Utopia from falling. We can estimate yeah, the well, both these characters are very inconsistent. To a I guess you could say that about every tons. fucking Considering superhero. Considering the way the fight as forced through the pillar Namor was pushing up, this means the potential energy exerted onto Namor would only be 1,425 tons of TNT. The energy Aquaman stopped was 109 billion times greater. Jeez. Namor was fast enough to easily catch up to the Human Torch, who flies over 140 miles per hour on a normal day, and sometimes even thousands of times the speed of sound. But Aquaman has routinely kept pace with Wonder Woman, who has been frequently shown to move thousands of times the speed of light. Yeah, but none of that strength and speed would matter if the Submariner just ordered a bunch of sharks to eat him first, right? Namor could command sea life, sure, but Aquaman could directly dominate their minds and force them to act on his will. And while Namor can telepathically communicate with other Atlanteans, he could not create hemorrhages or seizures like Aquaman could. Though Namor could certainly resist these mental attacks, similar to how he survived the Purple Man, this is still solid evidence that Aquaman's telepathy was more powerful. Oh, and don't forget, Aqua King can make his underwater buddies physically stronger with the clear, while Namor was stuck commanding plain old everyday fish. Overall, while their extremely similar powers were so closely matched, I guess Aquaman Namor is a, just enough of them like a, a, himself, a the technically, I guess, a fish type Aquaman could amphibian, victory, so he could, he could think he better control his mind, too. is Aquaman. Hey, thanks for watching the first episode of Season 6. If you want the battle music for yourself, click the link below. Want a new show to watch? Check out Genlock. It's crazy. It's got mechs, anime, awesomeness, Michael B. Jordan, and somehow I made it into voice character. Click the box. Battle Royale. You meant Battle Royale. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh okay. I didn't... They didn't even dawn on me that it's all the Mega Man fighting from all across the games. Well, I'll go Man One. Like I said, I knew he's gonna win. I did the only way that Namor wins if they do something where they say like, "Oh, his versatility in the air gave him the victory" or something like that. I will. I think they both. I like name. I do like name more, but I've always liked, especially when I was younger and I watched uh, the Justice League, Justice League Unlimited cartoons. I always liked Aquaman then because I was like he's he was a. I mean he was a. Like I said, he was an asshole. But I like that story arc, that with a character arc and development they had where he was a like. A, snobby douchebag stuck up king who turns into I mean, he he still had 
elements of that during the show. <laughs> like every so often, he ah, like he uh, go back into that I'm royalty and I'm better than you type thing. But uh, <laughs> but he was a uh, I always I always liked his character art in that show. And it, it, he was very inconsistent. I remember he beat Wonder Woman in that show, which was which was interesting. Then he tried to be, I mean, he tried to fight Superman. So somebody knocked him out with one punch. Uh, even though uh, that was an unlimited, even though I think it was in the Ray, the, the Justice League cartoon, they kind of went uh, back and forth. But anyway, Aquaman, I know the comments in this, and this is going to be crazy. People are going to be like, what? They only, he only won because his move was popular, and Marvel doesn't have a move. <laughs> oh my gosh. YouTube comment section. 21st century cesspool. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my reaction, hit uh, the like button, subscribe button, comments amongst yourselves in the comment section. And until next time, peace.